Yeah, hello and welcome to the last part uh, of our lecture, the tokenization of everything. And uh, in this part, um, I want to talk about the so-called token economy. What are the implications uh, of tokenization on existing financial market infrastructures? What are the existing current trends? And uh, of course, I want to give a short outlook how a token economy uh, of tomorrow will look like. And if you uh, missed the other videos of our uh, lecture, here you can see a short overview. So in the first part, we talked about the concept of tokenization, what are the fundamentals, what are the basics, how distributed ledger technology enables uh, this new concept. Uh, in the second part, we had a closer look at the different characteristics and properties uh, of a token. Uh, in the third part, uh, we were uh, looking at tokenization and how it can be enabled for innovative services uh, where we applied a specific a token blueprint. Yeah, and to summarize this uh, outstanding role of blockchain technology as a driver uh, towards the token economy, I would just want to highlight the most important uh, events and milestones in the recent uh, decade. So what we had, of course, was the implementation of the Bitcoin protocol in 2009. Uh, different altcoins followed the idea of Bitcoin. Then in 2015, um, we had the implementation of the so-called ERC-20 uh, Ethereum token contract. Uh, this facilitated uh, the issuance of own token on the Ethereum blockchain, which then led to a vast amount of different initial coin offerings in um, 2017. Um, as you can remember, one year later, this big ICO bubble bursted. And then in 2019, more and more companies uh, discussed the potential uh, to issue different token on a blockchain that represented uh, actually securities. Uh, therefore, we had the idea of security token offerings. Today, we have uh, established fintechs like Bitbond who use this kind uh, of technology to issue their uh, own security token. Then um, we had the idea of stable coins, where different currencies are assigned uh, to a specific token. And um, then uh, we had a vast amount of different utility tokens, which are mainly used to access a different service or operate uh, on a specific blockchain. And then uh, in 2020, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of dynamics in the market. Um, where many fintechs, many startups started to issue their own tokens, which represent uh, different kinds of equity, uh, which represent different kinds of assets, such as real estate or cars. And then we have a, a widely uh, discussion about the issuance of a central bank digital currency at the moment, where we put um, a currency like a franc or a euro onto the blockchain to um, initiate um, process optimization in um, transactions of financial infrastructures and of course in the community the next step uh, towards cryptocurrencies has taken place so-called decentralized finance instruments where not only payment tokens or currencies are issued on a blockchain but more or less whole uh, services whole financial microservices which are totally decentralized in a way where we can do lending automated uh, where, can we, where we can do peer-to-peer -peer payments. And um, as you can see, uh, the trend and developments uh, go forward where we initially reach some kind of token economy in the near future. Yeah, and as you might already know, the advantages of uh, tokenization, of course, increase traceability, um, simplified uh, transferability, uh, different assets can become more liquid and uh, we can merge uh, separated markets where we have one scalable marketplace and of course we can extend existing product portfolios uh, with additional financial instruments not only cryptocurrencies but also other assets yeah and uh, challenges still remain um, we will have a look at that later uh, still uh, only few standards exist uh, the international standard organization is currently working on a specific standard um, the uh, different uh, regulations are very country specific when it comes to anti, uh, anti money laundering or know your customers uh, rules. And um, yeah, we have to establish some kind of broad access to markets 
especially for business to business and uh, business to uh, consumer clients. And um, of course, we still have an increased vulnerability when it comes to cybercrime. And the importance uh, of a token economy is also reflected um, from an industry perspective. So what we did here is um, we conducted a survey with 22 different participants um, from the uh, banking industry, uh, from the financial sector, and we asked them how would you estimate the relevance uh, of uh, four main characteristics using blockchain and distributor, distributed ledger technology. And so um, they could select between um, the uh, programming capabilities, uh, they could select from the tamper proof uh, abilities of the database, uh, the combination between decentralized governance and as well uh, the role of transferring token. And as you can see here, top priority or top potential of uh, blockchain and distributed ledger is the value transfer of token. And um, this is really interesting because you can see a, a slow uh, integration into uh, businesses, into banks, uh, into financial institutes. And these insights from the survey, uh, they can be also confirmed um, from an uh, industry perspective. Uh, so what we did, we conducted uh, um, a review and overview of existing initiatives and projects uh, concerning the uh, financial market infrastructures using distributed ledger technology. And um, this is only a selection of uh, different initiatives worldwide where um, stock exchanges, where provider, infrastructure provider, um, try to implement solutions on basis of distributed ledger technology. Um, of course, in the first place, um, to provide services or to offer services around the custody of uh, digital assets or cryptocurrencies. And then in the next step, also to represent um, transactions of so-called assets in form of stocks, bonds, and other financial derivatives. And, um, uh, however, the different maturity levels vary at the moment. Um, of course, we have still some announcements. Uh, we have still uh, some initiatives which are in the prototype phase. Um, but of course, we also have some uh, projects which are already operate uh, on a uh, productive basis. And um, the dynamics in the market uh, accelerate somehow because um, the market infrastructure providers, they feel the pressure, they see that there are efficiency gains, but on the other side, uh, there are still high investment costs as well as transition costs when moving from an existing legacy IT system to a system which is mainly driven by distributed ledger technology. And to um, emphasize or highlight the complexity of this uh, existing structure and the existing processes, you can see here uh, an exemplary network where we have uh, the value transfer for the value chain investment. Um, we have, for instance, the bank customer, we have, for, for example, the retail bank, we have the broker on the right side, uh, you see the exchange, and the difficulty of uh, changing uh, or shifting towards uh, this new uh, technology is manifold because um, we have not only uh, technological challenges, we also have um, governance challenges, we also have changes, um, a process re-engineering, a process redesign. And um, as you uh, have heard in the first lecture where we were talking about the idea of um, Bitcoin, uh, where banks should uh, be obsolete one day, of course, this scenario uh, it's not very realistic, but as you can see, somehow uh, there's also the possibility that in some intermediaries uh, become obsolete. Um, but uh, the idea is when shifting one day to a decentralized uh, financial market infrastructure on basis of uh, this technology, um, let's say we use it for the tokenization of existing assets such as bonds or uh, shares, 
um, there will be also a governance shift um, where we just uh, have, for example, new kinds of roles. And uh, these roles are defined by new kinds, uh, by new necessary functions. So um, where we have the token holder, uh, a wallet needs to be implemented. Uh, the retail bank, bank becomes, for instance, a crypto bank. Um, then, of course, we have the crypto asset manager. Uh, we also need some new uh, skills and capabilities. Um, what we have is uh, alternative trading platforms. And, of course, the role of a custodian somehow changes because instead of storing uh, physical uh, shares or assets or licenses, um, it is necessary that he has to store uh, the private and public keys pair, key pairs, for instance. And uh, in case of tokenization, we also need a tokenization provider on one side to store, um, for instance, a physical set in form of a car. And um, of course, we need some infrastructural know-how to implement, to adapt uh, the smart contract to issue the token. And um, the interesting thing is that uh, you can already see this kind of shift and that many, many uh, market participants, uh, which are already in this kind of structures, somehow change or evolve their role. So I think in the midterm, there won't be uh, participants uh, will become obsolete, but rather uh, participants that change uh, their function and that change their role. And like uh, most innovative and disruptive technologies, there comes a day where legal frameworks uh, have to be adapted. And this is the same for uh, blockchain technology, especially for a technology uh, which implies a specific kind of political uh, organizational decentralization. And um, this is very remarkable because if you see the time span uh, of Bitcoin, uh, implemented 2009. There have been lots going on, especially in the last uh, two years. Um, I just remember the time 2017 where you have this unregulated marketplaces to trade cryptocurrencies. It was, was like uh, Wild Wild West. And um, there has been a lot going on in recent years, especially uh, in Switzerland and Germany, where also the idea of um, uh, digital programmable euro uh, takes shape and I think it will be uh, very really important because it's a prerequisite for such a decentralized financial market infrastructures to have such kind of digital currency uh, and then of course legislation uh, with the blockchain act the first one in Liechtenstein then we had the draft uh, in Switzerland last year it has been approved this year to adapt uh, and uh, build a basis for decentralized technologies and um, very uh, happy that uh, we also have an initiative on a European level um, because blockchain technology and uh, when it comes to digital assets, it's really important to have the network effects uh, to make use of the scalable capabilities of such platforms. Um, however, there's uh, of course still this idea of this open source community. And as you can see here, Bitcoin whales are still out. Uh, we'll move big funds uh, of Bitcoin worth more than uh, 1 billion US dollars uh, in, in seconds or minutes. Um, and the very interesting is uh, the idea of decentralized finance. This is uh, still not regulated, but I think you can see that the community is still working on the idea of decentralization where you have uh, financial microservices such as lending, for instance, totally decentralized. And um, it's a really interesting, exciting times. And uh, I think that uh, the important thing is that when it comes to regulation, that not the technology is regulated, but rather the idea is uh, to secure the user uh, when it comes to the trade uh, of uh, digital assets or cryptocurrencies. And to take a closer look uh, how uh, the FINMA in Switzerland handles um, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, they take a specific per perspective um, where they classify uh, the token into three major categories. Of course, you have the payment tokens, um, you have the utility tokens, and you have the asset token. And um, according to this um, threefold 
uh, classification, uh, different requirements for banks or different requirements for participants can be derived. So for instance, you need anti-manary laundering um, uh, requirements to be implemented for other asset token, uh, it's not necessary. Uh, I think in the future, it will be more important um, that uh, special participants such as custodians um, or validators, miners or infrastructure providers of DLT have to be certified or regulated in a specific way. And um, I'm very positive that this process will be also accelerated uh, through new adapted leg uh, regulatory frameworks. Uh, yeah, and this would be uh, the end of uh, our lecture, the tokenization of everything. And I hope you enjoyed it uh, to uh, gain some insights into the world of tokenization, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain. Uh, I just summarize it here, uh, three key takeaways. So of course, uh, bit, uh, blockchain is more than Bitcoin. Uh, it is an enabler for a new concept uh, in the near future where we tokenize uh, literally anything. Here it is important that uh, it will not be the holy grail, but for specific use cases, it is a good alternative to existing IS or information systems. Uh, second key takeaway uh, is that tokenization will create new classes of assets in the near future uh, where we have a, a product portfolio not only driven by traditional asset classes like stocks uh, or bonds, uh, but also like cryptocurrencies or other investment classes such as tokenized real estate or tokenized uh, luxury goods. And as a third part, tokenization uh, will be a driver to a so-called token economy. And uh, I think it will also drive and change the customer behavior when it comes to ownership of values uh, in the digital world. And especially one day when we have uh, this programmable uh, machine to machine a future, I think token economy will uh, provide an important component when is with this toolbox uh, of uh, the Internet of Things. If you need more information, I'm happy to refer you to our blog wiki. Here you can download our blockchain map where we uh, try to uh, define uh, different uh, wordings and uh, terminology around the broad universe of distributed ledger technology. And um, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free uh, to leave a comment and um, thank you very much for your attention.